So this is the Sony ZV-1F. That was a little bit sketchy right there. It's hard to beat this. Unless you're doing professional photography, then this is definitely gonna slow you down. All right, what's up? We are here today at Elk Grove Regional Park. We are going to take a look at my new point and shoot camera. So this is the Sony ZV-1F. The F is for fantastic. So this is the Sony ZV-1F, a small point and shoot camera that slots in below the Sony ZV-1, which I do have just not here. The ZV-1F is the vlog camera from Sony. It is built on the same chassis as the ZV-1. However, it has a wider fixed uh, focal length lens. I believe this is a 20 millimeter equivalent lens, whereas the ZV-1 was a 24 millimeter equivalent lens. So it gives you that wider vision. So when you are vlogging, you can see more of the background. Uh, that was the main thing here on the ZV-1F. Also, they kind of dialed back on some of the photography features on the ZV-1F. It no longer has raw photo capability. So, some have immediately written it off because of the lack of the raw. For me, honestly, I don't shoot raw all the time or ever. Honestly, that's kind of because I'm lazy. I pretty much shoot JPEG all the time, even on my Canon R6. I mean, I'll, I'll shoot RAW every once in a while once if I feel it's something to where I do need that extra dynamic range. 90 to 95% of the time that I'm doing my photography stuff, I'm shooting in JPEG. I, I Like I said, I, I respect the RAW format. I respect those that work in the RAW format. I personally don't really shoot or work in the RAW format. So if you love RAW, great. This isn't the camera for you. But if you're like me, the RAW thing is not a deal breaker for me especially at this price point i got this camera for less than 400 dollars because i had an open box from best buy so yeah this is the sony zv1f and i just kind of want to go around the park try to take some pictures there's a the schoolhouse here maybe some car photography of my vehicle here and just to see how this thing performs and with that i'm gonna go around and we are going to see how the sony zv1f handles uh photography all righty let's do it Ain't gonna lie. That was a little bit sketchy right there, that dude. I saw him out of the corner of my eye as I was uh, recording that. So I locked the doors just quick because I realized my doors were unlocked. Like I said, that, that, was a little, that was a little sketch, so. All right, but there's a lot of people here, so I'm not too worried about that. We're gonna go ahead and get out of the car and we are gonna I put on a jacket. Seems like it's a little bit chilly. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and try to take some pictures. Before we get out, let's, let's look at the Sony ZV-1 a little bit more. So like I said, same body style as the Sony ZV-1. However, it does not have the digital um, hot shoe. It has a, a cold shoe. So there is no functionality on this if you put a flash or if you put if you bought one of the Sony microphones that interfaces through this connector, it does not work. Also, the Sony ZV-1 has an integrated lens cap. This one does not. The lens is exposed here, so you have to have this small thing. The battery is the same exact model as the Sony ZV-1 Sony NPBX1 battery. Still uses a SD card, and then otherwise it has the same interface. It has the jog wheel here, the buttons here, button to zoom in digitally and then your record and your shutter button and then your modes. This has a full touch screen this time that can be used for the actual menu whereas the Sony ZV-1 it had a touch screen that could only be used to focus. Let's go take some pictures because we are starting to lose some light. We're going to be doing some higher ISO shooting I'm assuming. Alrighty let's go. So there's always been this road school district building here in this park and never been inside. It looks like they might open it up to the public.
So what's cool about the Sony ZV-1 and the ZV-1F is really it is a full featured camera in terms of you can control your shutter speed, your aperture, and your ISO. Uh, the only thing is because it's not a real camera so to speak, it is not a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. The way you are able to control those features is somewhat limited because you don't have more than one dial. You only have one dial on this. So here on the, on the ZV-1 and the ZV-1F, you kind of have to toggle between your shutter, aperture, and your ISO. So if I want to control shutter, I got to press this down button. If I want to control aperture, I got to press it again to kind of toggle in between. And then if I want to change my ISO, I have to press right and it'll give me the range of the ISOs that I could cycle through. So while it is a full-fledged camera in the traditional sense, it is also not because you don't have those individual dials. That's why this is classified more as a point and shoot versus a traditional mirrorless a camera because you don't have those features. My Canon R6, I have three dials. I have one that's dedicated to control the shutter speed, I have one dedicated to control the aperture, and I have one dedicated to control the ISO. I also have a dial on the lens that can control any feature that I want, whether it be ISO, shutter speed, or aperture. So what you gain in the convenience of having a pocket size camera, you lose in the ability to control at your leisure. But the pocketability and the quality, I mean, it's hard to beat this. Of course, unless you're doing professional photography, then you are gonna want those other features because otherwise this is definitely gonna slow you down. Let's keep going. So this right here can be an interesting uh, picture. All right, so we've been here for about half an hour. We didn't spend too long here. Hopefully we got some interesting pictures or at least some decent pictures here on the Sony ZV-1F. Like I said, we're just trying to see how this thing does in terms of just the photography side. I did notice that this camera does seem to be a, quite a bit more noisy than obviously my Canon R6. Even the original Sony ZV-1, when I boosted the ISO just a little bit. But like I said, the compact form factor is great to just have a camera on you all the time that is not your cell phone. But but the ergonomics is god awful on this and I'm assuming most other point and shoot cameras of a similar size. There's literally just barely anything to hold on to. There's not enough dials on it. You have to toggle in between the different settings. From that standpoint, yeah, not the best situation. When you're in a pinch or when you're in a situation where you simply cannot bring a full size or even a compact mirrorless or DSLR camera, um, these point and shoot cameras that are more full featured should definitely fit the bill. Alrighty, and with that, it's getting a little dark. I don't know if this part gets sketchy at night, but I don't intend to find out. Alrighty, with that, catch you all on flip.